Mm. So, let's play with the pad thai. Put some lime juice on that. Mix it up a little bit. Today I am bringing you to Thailand for lunch. We have a beautiful array of foods. Um, I just picked this up actually um, on my way back from running some errands and I wanted to do a really quick video of Thai food which is right next to Vietnamese, uh, Vietnamese food. It's one of my favorite cuisines. Um, Vietnamese and Thai food and Chinese food, my top three Asian foods of all time. Because they're very similar. I mean, they share the same certain styles. They share the uh, same certain ingredients. Um, the flavors are similar. But uh, I love I love Thailand. I love China. I love Viet Vietnam. Those foods are great. Um, I haven't been to any of those countries, but I hope to one day. I mean, I've been to Japan, so I definitely will be able to go to one of those countries very soon. Um, but with that said, let me introduce what we're eating today. So I just took a sip of my Thai iced tea. Can't, uh, you can't have Thai food without Thai iced tea. Um, and then we have the chicken satay here, which is usually an appetizer. It's uh, chicken on a skewer. It's pretty simple, but it's got, I think, like a curry flavor to it. And these are the sauces here. I'm not exactly sure what this is. It looks like a peanut sauce, but we'll try it and we'll figure it out. Um, we also have pickled cucumbers. I have my absolute favorite fish sauce with chilies. It, smell, it smells like your cooch, but I still like it. <laughs> um, and then we have pineapple fried rice, which has shrimp, um, cucumbers, I have cashews, peas, green onions, eggs, pineapple, um, and chicken in there. So if you haven't had pineapple fried rice, then you're probably scratching your head like, why would you eat pineapples with fried rice? But it is a delicious combo. I mean, maybe if you think, uh, some of you might think that uh, pineapples on pizza is weird, but this this actually works. Uh, sweet and savory, I think, I think really works well with each other. Um, and I also have the traditional pad thai. You guys all know what this is. Um, it's got peanuts on the side, um, green onions, and I got it with pork this time. Um, so let's actually start with that. Oh. And ugh, I always forget the soup. The soup here is a tom yum ka, which is regular tom yum soup. I don't know if you've ever had tom yum soup, but this one is with coconut milk. That's why it's white there. It's got mushrooms, chink, uh, chicken, cilantro. It's very simple, but it's absolutely flavorful. I love this soup. I could have ordered the regular one, but I actually like the coconut. The coconut version. I just think it's, again, savory and sweet. Savory and sweet. I love those two, um, those two flavors combined. So yeah. But anyways, actually, I'll do that later. Let's have some soup. You like my Asian bowl? If you're Asian, you know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. Our moms would have these in the cupboards um, all the time, and we would use them. Super Asian bowl. Scoop some of this lovely soup. And I love Thai food too because it's usually served a spicy. I mean, you, you can ask for to make it not spicy, but I, I love how spicy it is. As you can see, here's the soup. Can't really see it, it's kind of white, but I'm gonna add some chilies to it and fish sauce. Mix that up a little bit. Mmm. Mmm. Really, really savory because of the fish sauce. And citrusy. 
because um, I know they put lime juice in here. Mm. It's absolutely refreshing. A little mushroom. Mmm. Mmm. Wash that down with some Thai tea. I love Thai tea. Too, can you get, uh, too bad you can't spike it like the way I, I do with all my drinks, as you've seen in my other videos. Alright, let's have some fried rice. Got some onions and pineapple in there. Mmm. So pineapple fried rice tastes different in every restaurant, really. It's not all the same. Mm. That's really good. Some pic pickled cucumber. A lot of people find cucumbers so useless because It's practically water, but I think it's so, so refreshing. It's kind of like jicama. Have you guys had jicama? It's, um, jicama is often used in Mexican cuisine. Mmm. So, Play with the pad thai. Put some lime juice on that. Mix it up a little bit. Mmm. Okay. You guys. Thai food is the way to go. Mm. Yes. Some more soup. The spice. That spice is already hitting me. It's funny because at every <clears throat> the Thai restaurants vary too, so it, their spicy levels are always so different. Sometimes when you ask for medium, it's still scorching hot. But if you go to another Thai restaurant and you ask for medium, it's not hot enough. So the the levels of spiciness they're they're just so arbitrary like you don't even know what you're getting. So good luck. Usually I just say I do just usually go for medium, but if it's not spicy enough, I'll just add. You know, it's better to add. You can't really take away, so you might as well just go as low as you can, or as no, uh, or what you know you can handle, and then just fix it later. Some more soup, but let's actually try this guy here. See, chicken satay. Excuse me. So let's dip it in the sauce here. Hmm. Hmm. That's definitely a peanut sauce. It's 
good. Get some hot sauce. Maybe a little peanut. Mmm. You know what my biggest fear is? My biggest fear is moving somewhere where there isn't an abundance of Asian food. I live in Huntington Beach, which is near Westminster, which has the highest population of Vietnamese people. So you can only imagine all the restaurants and great food there are when it comes to Viet. Uh, when it comes to Vietnamese people and the culture and food, um, I'm afraid to leave it just because I don't want to have to miss it, you know? And a lot of times people say, well, why don't you just make it where you live? But here's the thing though, the ingredients you actually need at the supermarkets that are located here. I mean, yeah, I'm sure other locations have their restaurants, but to me, since I grew up in it, I'm kind of snobby about it too. So if I go somewhere out of nowhere and I find this random Asian restaurant, I'm going to be a little judgmental. I'm going to look at the menu and go, this is not the real thing. And I think a lot of Asians um, can say that because we're kind of, we're kind of picky when it comes to our culture's food. Hmm. I guess it's just not Asian people, it's everyone. But if I ever move, maybe to Iceland, you guys have to send me care packages with all the necessary ingredients. The struggle with the fucking chopsticks. I'm doing this again. I attempted it. Don't get mad at me. I can use the chopsticks for the pad thai though. That's fine. Mm. Mm. Guys, don't be afraid of trying this coconut soup. Let me be consistent here. This is coconut milk, not regular milk. Tian hates regular milk. I said that in my other video. Someone was sad I didn't drink milk in my donuts video. Which I found kind of funny. It makes sense. I know you guys um, love your milk with your cookies and donuts. <clears throat> I actually like to drink water when I eat cookies and donuts. It's really weird. Mm. Amazing. So check them.
My friend just texted me, she, I actually had her. <laughs> she's, um, she's in the business of, um, marketing, all that good stuff. And she watched my videos and she said, you definitely need a Twitter account. I said, I've had a Twitter, Twitter account, but I deleted it just because I don't really use it. It's not... Okay, I don't really use any social media, really. I mean, I do, but I'm not addicted to them. I'm actually forcing myself to use them, which is not very natural, which is not very real, which I, which I'm absolutely against. But I think that for me to get out there though, to ex uh, expose all of this, is to do that, and I, I get it. And this, in this day and age, you've got to use those uh, social media platforms to get your your name out there. But anyways, she made it a point to make an account for me. So thank you, Olivia. I love you. Now I have a Twitter account because of you. Mm. So funny. Yeah, I really... I'm not really good with my phone. Like, let me just tell you, I am the worst at returning text messages or messages in general, whether it be on Facebook, Instagram, text message, voicemails. I do not like returning them. And I don't know why, I don't know what it is. I'm, I've always been trying to figure out why I respond like two or three days later, but I really thought about it just not too long ago. I like to treat my messages like they're emails almost. You know how emails you can actually get back to someone after a certain amount of time, like you don't have to get back to them right away. That's how I treat text messages. Um, because what happens is if I respond right away, I usually get a text, a reply right away. And it turns out, and it ends up being this full conversation while I'm trying to get something done, like maybe working, right? I shouldn't be texting while I'm working, but sometimes that happens. And I feel bad, but I don't want to carry on a conversation if I cannot finish it or if I can't reply back to you real fast. Now, if it's an emergency, if it's... If it's a text message saying, oh my gosh, I'm on the freaking freeway, uh, you know, stranded, stuck somewhere, then yes, of course I would respond. But questions like, hey, are you free Friday? And if today's Monday, then I'll get back to you Thursday. You know, usually because I, I don't know. That, that is the reason why. It's because I don't want to have a full on conversation. I just, not that I don't have time. Everyone has some free time, but... I feel like it takes away my life. Like it just sucks the soul out of me. So I try to stay away from it the best I can. I actually even thought about taking away text messaging. That's how much I hate it. Not crazy. I just feel like the older I get, the simpler I want my life to be. Really, honestly. I don't know how I got to that point, but...
this is good. <clears throat> I've always... It's always been challenging for me to decide whether or not I want to finish my food for these mukbang videos or just eat until I'm perfectly full. Just because I think that if I finish my food or if I force myself to eat everything, it starts to become a challenge. And it's not about challenge, it's about enjoying food. Um, every bite is, you know, considered and thought about and yeah, and I just feel like if you're, if I'm forcing food in my mouth, I just think, I don't want you to think that that's a challenge, like I'm just trying to impress you or prove something to you, because that is not, I don't want my, my channel to be a challenge, it is not a food challenge, I'll tell you that right now, no food challenges, not even the spicy noodle stuff, I, I don't really like challenges, I just don't think they're, they're not exciting to me, I don't know. Everyone's different. That's why YouTube's huge. You get to choose whatever the hell you want to see. Um, but if you're looking for a spicy noodle challenge, it is not here. It is not this channel. I'm sure there's there are wonderful mukbang channels out there who can share that with you. But it's just not my style. But yeah, with that said, I think I can keep on eating just a little bit more. I drop my food a lot. So, people hold their chopsticks like this or something like that. I'm not sure. I hold it like this. Like, it's like crisscross. I just learned it that way. No one taught me. I just picked up the chopsticks and went at it. Hmm. It's so bright out. Definitely gonna finish this though. Oh shit. Steve, man. All right, guys. I think I'm good to go. But thank you again for watching. Um, and I'll see you soon. Bye.